This is John Young with the Weekend Handyman. Today we're going to be unboxing a walk-behind lawnmower here from Toro. This is from their recycler line. They have got a full line of Toro walk-behind mowers. There's electric start. This is an electric start unit. They've got some with electric start. They have the personal pace capability on many of them. They have a some of them that are just a, a, a self-propelled unit with just a squeeze in the handle. There's just so many different varieties. There's some that are that have the capability to be stored in a vertical fashion. You got to really kind of get an idea of what's going to work the best for your application. We didn't need the storage capability because we do have space, so we didn't need to be able to store it vertically. So that was out of it. We didn't uh, the tires and such. We didn't need to have the bigger tires in the back, so we went with this one. We wanted the electric start because that's something that we've actually kind of played with a little bit with my mother-in-law's more and. We decided that's the one we wanted to go with. So it's about $3.99 at Home Depot is where we picked this particular one up. Bought two things, the mower itself and the blade. Now, this is a 21 inch or 22 inch blade, excuse me, 22 inch blade, which is the Toro length. They have uh, the Toro, the, the uh, original one from Toro, that is about 20 bucks. And then they have some out there that are cheaper. Now, I'm gonna try to move this up there. You can see that there's three holes in that. And that's the biggest difference between um, the, the knockoff ones and this is that you have three holes and they're fairly small. You can take a look at that. When we get into the mower itself, we'll get to look at and see why the, there are three, which two of them are basically little pins and the third one is actually the bolt that holds it on. But you're seeing that this is maybe a half inch uh, hole in here where a lot of the lawnmowers, such as uh, some of the old lawn boys and such that I've worked with over the years and the Toro riders, have a much larger spindle that's holding the blade. Now the knockoff ones have got that spindle hole that's larger and then they have little different shims or what have you, washers that you can put on there to reduce it down to what you need here. But then you have that little hole knockout if you lose that piece then the blade becomes somewhat uh, of a, uh, a piece of junk. So I went with, spent the extra $2 and got the, the Toro one that's got a little uh, edge on it here for blowing it, blowing it out and also to kind of chop it up, whatever. If it works that well I really don't care because we don't, we're, we're not bagging. We're just basically going and mowing the yard when this type of application is needed. So we're going to open up the box here, and I'm going to be using my little Craftsman utility knife, which is a dual blade. One blade is the traditional, and the second blade is a little hook one, which can be used for uh, cutting linoleum and a few things like that. But it works wonderfully for cutting boxes because it cuts the tape, and it does not cut into whatever's in the in the box. So, Awesome. This is probably my favorite utility knife now because again, it's got two handles, two blades. Well, I can't put them both up at the same time. That's a bad. The hooked one. Yep. And you can only get one up at a time. And the blade. Cool thing from Craftsman. That's available, by the way, out at Lowe's. You can go up there if you can find them. I can't find them anymore. As soon as I can, I'm buying another one. Actually, I'm buying one for the house garage, one for the other shed, and one for this shed. Okay, so we get into our box here. I'm going to just put this down so I have more space. We've got our mower. And again, this is just opened up, so you're going to be doing this with me and finding out that some of the things are jammed in here. However, they've got them packed in here. So we've got our instructions for the 22 inch mower and probably has a little charger in there, I'm guessing, because this is electric start and it's doing its thing on a step back there. Should have brought a table and set it right here. That would have only made sense. Be more prepared. Um, packing stuff. Packing stuff. So here is the chute, the blowback chute, and that are down in that area. Just trying to figure out how they have that in there. Now, mowers like this, gas mowers that use oil, they come with the oil, and there are different types of Toro oil. This one is in the plastic bag, yay, and it is not leaking, yay, yay, it's a double yay. I've had many times where these things have leaked, and they've been leaked in the plastic bag's half full, and then there have been times where the bag, the bag has ruptured also, and you're, you're all done. So now this particular is using just a lawnmower oil 30 weight. There is a higher end oil from Toro that are in smaller, smaller jugs. And you can pick that up. I don't think that's what this is. That while this says this is a premium, they talk about the other oil being the kind that you would not have to change. You basically check the oil and add. And then we did some videos on those from some of the shows where they're coming out with, with mowers that are meant to basically never change the oil. I, when I did the video for that, there was a lot of you who were like, oh my gosh, what a bad idea. So this is regular oil right here. Nothing fancy with that. 
Um, got a fuel treatment thing in here, a little, little pouch with some fuel treatment. If you're going to do the mower at the end of the season, put some stable in the gas for the last couple of tanks. That way, what's in the tank will be good. But the oil is here, we just dump it in, and we should be good. Although this looks like it's, uh, oh, I don't know if it says size. But typically, they send out just the, the right amount of oil to fill the reservoir, and it's not like you have extra. I'm going to have to study that, because this is, this is a pretty big, a pretty big little, uh, um, it's not quite a quart, but there's quite a bit of oil in there. So, we'll look at that later. The blowback chute, which mounts on the side of the mower, so we can blow back. It holds the, flips the little uh, cover up. A couple of little little uh, points here that you can hook onto the deck of the mower so it's not going to pop out and it should be good to go. Very important because if without this, we don't have blowback capability, which is what we're going to primarily be using it for in our application here. So now I'm trying to get, you know, I'm going to put that down. I want to get the bagger, the bagger out and it seems to be caught on some things. What you're seeing right now is the handle here. I think what's happened is that the bagger was caught on the flap there. So comes with the bagger, nothing fancy with the bagger, you've got a nice handle on it, and you've got your little back area, a handle back here to dump. It has the smooth surface that well once it's full, this will kind of you know be rolling or kind of going over the grass and such. So the plastic will help protect the bag so it's not going to basically get worn out right away. Uh, hooks on, a couple of spots in the back of your mower. And you're good to go, because this will all fall down. Hooks here, falls into there, and you are good. There's a little clip here to get this. It all it all clips on here. And like so, I'll just do, do one of them. And then your bagger is good to go. We just clip the other two sides. Nothing too terribly fancy. I mean, it's just a, a kind of a standard bagger. Most of the baggers on... The walk-behind mowers are very, very similar to this, and it doesn't matter if it's if it's gas or electric. This is what they are. So there it is, ready to go. But now we have the mower itself. Now this is going to take a little bit more to get this up and out. So I'm going to pick this up and pull it out, and then I'm going to have to probably move camera angles to uh, to get this set, so you guys will be able to see this. So I'm going to pull this out and probably put a table here. So we can have this up on a table so you guys can get a better view of, of the machine itself and we'll kind of go through some of the things. But as of right now, we are up to that point where yep, it's time for the machine to come up. So we have the machine out and you have to make sure you pull a couple of cardboard pieces that are above the wheels. You pull those out and then the machine comes out of the box very easily. Everything is pretty much together. There was one of the little handle bolts that had just come apart and it was sitting in the bottom of the box. Not a big deal, but that's where it should have been, just like that. We have our, our spots to mount the handle. The handle, which is right here, that will go back there. You've got your your engine area here that has the big sticker on it right here that says, do not run, put oil in first. Um, and of course you have the, the oil spot right here, which is a nice large area as our dipstick and such but it's a good inch plus hole to fill it's almost the size of a gas an old gas we'll call it because now we have the new one that our, our gas area here that is ready for the uh gas only uh, you can't see it too well down here but here's one of our clean out spots where we attach a garden hose and then we run the mower and that will kind of clean the underside of the deck we've got our little handle back here which will allow us to go from mulching to catching and we lift this up, we put that bag right in here, and we are good to go. That handle will open up this back area. So now it's open, we can, we can catch. We put it down, and that will mulch, or if we put our shoot in on this side, it will blow back. So we've got everything right there. One of the big things that we wanted with this particular machine, I'm going to see if I can show this to you just carefully was over here and it's our electric start uh, electric start area and it has everything there that uh, that will do that this is a personal pace mower let's just kind of see a personal pace handle here and what that does is that means that we will hold the handle and as we're going we can if we're going to be going faster and pushing a little quicker and pushing a little bit more it will go faster and if we're not pushing quite as fast it can go slower so the personal pace, uh, this is a rear wheel drive unit on this one. 
the personal pace will allow you to go at your speed. Now, Toro also has some that are all-wheel drive, so they have front and rear wheel drive. And what they do with some of those is that when I'm going forward, it will use the rear wheel drive. When I'm going to go backwards, it actually has rear um, assist. So when I pull back on the handle, the front wheels actually will push it backward. We tried these down at GIE a little bit. They were okay. I wonder, I think I've got a video clip here. Let's put that video clip here. I think Lori was demonstrating that capability. Let's see if we can drop that in right here. So Lori, she kind of liked it, but it was something that you'd have to get used to. Um, it wasn't, obviously it wasn't something that she was excited enough about for us to purchase that on our own. We decided to go with this unit instead. We wanted the electric starter, so basically we could go out there, push the button, start it up kind of a thing, mo 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 be done, put it back in the, in the shed, make sure it's charged up, and we're good to go. That's our unboxing video here. Um, oh, I wanted to, uh, let's do one last thing if we can before we shut the video off. I wonder if we can look at the bottom side of the deck. If I can show you that, because there's our blade. We come with a 22 inch blade right here. Of course it is, it is sharp. It's, it feels like it's the same one as the one I showed you. And you can see the spots right down in there where the nut is to remove and replace the blade. I personally like to have two blades. I can run one blade. When it gets dull, I have the second blade. When they're both dull, then I pull my grinder out because I don't care to pull the grinder out to do just one, one blade. So I want to do two at the same time. That way they're good to go. In my situation, I'll be basically sharpening blades once a season because I have multiple mowers, multiple blades for each mower. So I get them all done and then someday, kind of in July or August, some in that time frame, is typically when I've been sharpening blades. Anyway, we'll put links in the description below so you guys can go check out the Toro and you can check out everything we've been talking about in this video and we're going to be now putting this together in a different video then we're going to be getting ready to take it out and showing you how this all works this is john young with the weekend handyman thanks for watching for more tips and how-to videos go to weekendhandyman.com